Hi everyone, this is the Science Chef. Today we'll be learning about the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, the fifth part of our series on the gas laws. Please go nowhere, and we'll be right back after this timeout. If you'd like to watch more of these tutorials, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notification bell. If you'd also like to watch our other tutorials and attempt at trivia on the gas laws, check the link in the description. According to John Dalton, the pressure exerted by a mixture of gases which do not react chemically together is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases that make up the mixture. In other words, if we have a mixture of gases A, B, C in a cylinder, then the total pressure Pt exerted by the mixture is the sum of the individual pressures of the gases if each gas were to occupy the volume occupied by the mixture of gases and is given as Pt equals to Pa plus Pb plus Pc, where Pa, Pb, and Pc are the partial pressures of gases A, B, and C respectively, and Pt is the total pressure of the gas mixture. Meanwhile, partial pressure of say gas A can be calculated as the product of the mole fraction of the gas Xa and the total pressure of Pt. The mole fraction of gas A is the ratio of the number of moles of gas A to the total number of moles of all the gases in the mixture and is expressed as shown on the screen. A common application of the Dalton's law of partial pressure is in the collection of gases over water at certain temperatures. Usually, the pressure exerted by the collected gas is the total pressure or pressure of the wet gas, which is the sum of the pressure of the dry gas and the saturated vapor pressure of water at that temperature. Therefore, if you are to use the pressure of the collected gas in any calculation, we must only use the pressure of the dry gas by deducting the saturated vapor pressure of water from the pressure of the wet gas. Let's now look at the practical applications of the law. Question 1. A given mass of oxygen gas collected over water at 10 degrees Celsius and 770 mm mercury pressure has a volume of 40 cm cube. Calculate its volume when dry at STP. Saturated vapor pressure of water at 10 degrees Celsius is 9 mm mercury. This question is a combination of the Dalton's law of partial pressure and the general gas equation. From the parameters provided, we are expected to calculate the pressure of the dry gas at the non-standard conditions and then use the value to calculate the volume of the dry gas at the standard conditions. So from the question, we are given the pressure of wet oxygen which is the total pressure at 770 mm mercury, saturated vapor pressure of water at 10 degrees Celsius as 9 mm mercury, standard pressure which is P2 at 760 mm mercury, initial temperature T1 as 10 degrees Celsius which is equivalent to 283 Kelvin and standard temperature as the final temperature T2 that is 273 Kelvin. Initial volume V1 as 40 cm cube and we are to determine the final volume V2 at STP. So from Dalton's law, pressure of wet oxygen is equal to pressure of dry oxygen plus saturated vapor pressure of water which means that the pressure of dry oxygen, which is at P1, will be equal to pressure of wet oxygen minus saturated vapor pressure of water, which gives us 761 mm mercury. Then, using the general gas equation, P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2, making V2 the subject of the formula, and then evaluating the equation, we obtain 38.6 cm cube as the volume of the dry oxygen. Question 2. The volume of a sample of methane collected over water at a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 700 mm mercury was 30 cm cube. Calculate the volume of the dry gas at STP if the saturated vapor pressure of water at 12 degrees Celsius is 10 mm mercury. This question is similar to question 1. From the question, the pressure of wet methane, which is the total pressure, is 700 mm mercury. Saturated vapor pressure of water at 12 degrees Celsius is 10 mm mercury. Standard pressure, which is P2, is 160 mm mercury. Initial temperature T1 is 12 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 285 Kelvin. And standard temperature, which is T2, the final temperature, is 273 Kelvin. Initial volume V1 is 30 cm cube, and we are to calculate the final volume V2 at STP. Applying Dalton's law of partial pressure, the pressure of wet methane equals to pressure of dry methane plus standard vapor pressure of water, which means that the pressure of dry methane, which is the P1, will be equal to what pressure of wet methane minus standard vapor pressure of water 
and that gives us 690 millimeters mercury as the initial pressure of P1. Then using the general gas equation, P1 V1 over T1 equals to P2 V2 over T2, making V2 the subject of formula and then evaluating the equation, we obtain 26.1 cm3 as the volume of the dry methane. Question 3. If a mixture of gases in a cylinder contains 60 grams of oxygen, 75 grams of nitrogen and 30 grams of hydrogen, calculate the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas if the total pressure exerted exerted by the mixture is 785 mm mercury. Take the relative atomic masses of oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen to be 16, 14 and 1 respectively. In this question, we will be applying the relationship between mole fraction and partial pressure. So we will first determine the number of moles of each gas and then calculate the mole fraction of dry hydrogen after which we will then determine the partial pressure of hydrogen using its mole fraction and the total pressure. So from the provided parameters, mass of oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen are 60 grams, 75 grams and 30 grams respectively. Total pressure is 785 millimeters mercury. Using number of moles equals to mass over molar mass, the number of moles of oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen are calculated as 1.875 moles, 2.679 moles and 15 moles respectively. The mole fraction of hydrogen, XH2, is determined by the ratio of the number of moles of hydrogen to the total number of moles of all the gases and that gives a value of 0.767. Note that the mole fraction is a ratio and has no unit. Finally, the partial pressure of hydrogen is given as the mole fraction of hydrogen times the total pressure which gives us a value of approximately 602.1 mm mercury. Question 4. Calculate the total pressure in millimeters mercury exerted by a mixture of gases containing carbon 4 oxide, sulfur 4 oxide, and nitrogen 4 oxide. If their partial pressures are 500 millimeters mercury, 0.85 times 10 power 5 newtons per meter squared, and 0.75 atm respectively. This is a tricky question that tests your knowledge and understanding of the interconversion of the different units of pressure. Since we are told to give our answers in millimeters mercury, then we must convert the newton per meter squared and atm to millimeters mercury using the conversions shown on the screen. So from the parameters provided, partial pressure of CO2 is 500 millimeters mercury. Partial pressure of SO2 is 0.85 times 10 to the power 5 newton per meter square, which is equivalent to 637.55 millimeters mercury. And the partial pressure of NO2 is 0.75 atm, equivalent to 570 millimeters mercury. So applying the Dalton's law of partial pressure, the total pressure will be equal to the partial pressure of carbon 4 oxide plus the partial pressure of sulfur 4 oxide plus the partial pressure of nitrogen 4 oxide. The total pressure of the mixture of gases will be 1707.55 mm mercury. In our next tutorial, we'll be learning about the last part of the physical gas laws in this series, that is the Graham's law of diffusion and its applications. Endeavor to subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification bell to get notified when the video is published. Until then, be safe.